We're joined now by Choctaw senior wide receiver Brian Richardson out of Fairhope, Alabama. Brian, thanks so much for your time. Let's first of all take a look back at that Louisiana college game. What was the takeaway from that ball game that, that your, your coaches wanted to, to have you take away from? Well, really, it was a funny thing because we buried the game film from that from that game, and it was kind of just like a symbolic. It was it was past us. You know, we we knew that we showed up off the bus, just not ready to play, and so I felt like it was a good thing just to almost get it past us and. We get, we got into this past week on our bye week and got really working hard and just you know that all the focus was on UMHB and getting ready for October the eighth and getting ready to play them this Saturday. So. Well, it, how how important was having the bye week at this particular time after a tough road loss, but before probably the hardest game of the season? It always seems to have a good break, especially like you said after a tough loss. It's always a good break to have, especially always going into the Mary Harden Baylor game. That's definitely I think that's a planned thing by Coach Joseph and. A, I like it because it gives us extra preparation for one of the better teams in the conference, and it feel, feels a lot better having you know the extra three or four days of practice to get into that. So. Then we know what Mary Harden Baylor is going to bring to the field in terms of their personnel. Uh, they're the team to beat in this conference, it seems like, every year. Do you think maybe that other players, other teams get it in their heads that, hey, maybe we can't fall behind these guys early, or it may be something a little bit up here? And that works against opponents for Mary Harden Baylor? I really do because I feel like I think we gained more of an advantage two years ago when we beat them. And so now, even last year, we did lose by 10 points, but it was every time we got down, it, it wasn't a sense of, oh no, here it goes again. It was always, we always had a fight in us to get back into the game. And we felt good about it, even though, you know, we lost by 10 points. It was probably one of the closest games they had last year in the conference. And so it felt good just to to know that, that we aren't that team, that you know everybody it seems to, to, to cower down almost in a way to them when they get up seven or ten points. It feels like a lot of people kind of give up and it's you know the game's over. But I feel like our team has a different type of motivation when we get into that game and knowing that we can beat them. You know, it happened two years ago, and we, and we do have the mindset that we can do it. Now you've uh, caught passes from both Adam Schaefer and now Tommy Rear, two really good quarterbacks. Tell us a bit about the differences between the two as a freshman and a sophomore catching passes from Adam the last two years from Tommy. And it was funny because, you know, when Adam went down my freshman year, it was Tommy came in and his first completion was through the hands of a McMurray defender and into mine. It was a funny kind of completion. But it's always been, you know, they're similar in ways. But, you know, Tommy's more mobile quarterback. But Adam really, you know, it was always – it was always pinpoint, and that and that was good. But Tommy also throws a different kind of spin on it, and he always gets the ball to you in your hands and makes really good throws. And I always uh, enjoy catching the balls from both of them. They always seem to, you know, put it on a good spot. So I mean, both of them are similar in ways. But you know, Adam was more of a pocket passer. Tommy, you can roll him out of the pocket, you know, get him on the move, and he's really good though. So I have enjoyed catching from both of them. So and and that really does make a difference because Tommy does seem like he plays fearless when he runs the football. He doesn't know how to slide. No, he doesn't. And I mean, I think it kind of goes back to his high school days. It, he was a running back playing the quarterback position in high school, and uh, we talk about it all the time about how I think he told me he never even had over 100 yards passing in a game in high school. And that's the funny thing is now, you know, he's breaking records, broke a record last year against UMHB about passing yards and stuff like that. And it's so funny now. And he still just has that reckless abandon of being a running back, just runs and doesn't know how to slide. But, you know, it also gains the confidence of your teammates knowing that, you know, he's out there laying, hit, uh, laying it out on the line for you. So you want to do the same for him. Now we know we had you and Randall Farr and Matt Burke all coming back. But this year we've seen the emergence of some young receivers uh, as well. Talk about some of these guys who are new receivers on the football team because they're big guys. they got good hands. Mm -hmm. Steve Smith, especially from right here in Clinton, I mean, he's really impressed me the way he came in, even from day one in camp. You know, I could tell he was going to be a real productive player for us. And then on the other side, Keelan Watson from Moss Point, I, thought he's, I think he's done a very good job coming in behind Randall Farr. And then behind me, we got a few guys coming up, and then uh, also some veterans that are stepping up too, just playing some different positions. Marion Buford from Mobile has also done a really good job, and I think we've all just kind of, I think this year the older guys had a new mindset about themselves. We were going to help them, you know, gain some exposure into the game and, you know, help them gain some confidence because in some past years we kind of just felt like some people were just, you know, letting them come up by themselves. We wanted to make sure that they got, really got involved and got into their playbook this year, so. Now, they're actual rookies, but you're mm -hmm. rookie on the practice field. <laughs> Tell us how you got that nickname and why it stuck. Well, it was a funny thing because at, what happened was one day in practice, uh, Coach Joseph was looking for a receiver, and I was just kind of in between the JV and the varsity when we were all practicing together, and I hopped in there. Well, you know, I got lucky enough to be able to start my freshman year, 
And every time I messed up or did something good, he always referred to me as rookie because every freshman was a rookie. But I, for some reason, I think he still doesn't know my name sometimes. And uh, But it's it's funny thing, and all the seniors kind of made it stick that year. And then after that, you know, they even told me my freshman year, you'll be your senior, and they'll still call you rookie. And, I, you know, I kind of shrugged it off. No, nah, you know, it won't happen. But, you know, you can be called worse things. So rookie, it, it was a funny nickname, and it stuck. And I think even everybody around campus, I don't even really respond to Brian anymore. It's kind of a funny thing. Well, you got 95 catches coming into this game, and you've played in every game in your four years here at MC so far, but one, and I could probably count on one hand the number of guys that we could say that about. How important is that, I guess, longevity or just being able to, to hang with it and uh, uh, avoid a lot of injury important to you? Well, really, I, I've been lucky enough to avoid those injuries like you talk about, and uh, I mean, minor stuff, you know, groin pulls, stuff like that, but it's really, I've consider myself blessed to have been able to play in every game except for that one due to sickness and it's never been an injury factor for me knock on wood and I've always had you know just confidence in the game plan that we've had and confidence in going into every week that we you know we're going to get it done and I, I just feel like this year you know even if I don't have the amount of receptions or even things like two years ago or a year ago that you know do, just being a better blocker being a better leader in general will also help our team. Well this is your senior year so what are your plans after you leave Mississippi College? Well, right now I'm majoring in exercise science with a minor in psychology, and I'm hoping to get into uh, graduate school somewhere for sports psychology. And, uh, you know, there's a few options that I could deal with doing that. But uh, as a, I probably won't graduate until a year from December, just gaining a few extra classes and, and trying to get into graduate school, and then maybe won't even reapply to a graduate school till the fall, maybe get a job or something like that in the meantime. All right, well, Brian, we thank you for your time, and wish you good luck in the game tonight. Thank you.